Welcome back to the A320 Mentor Channel, your runway to mastering the Airbus A320 from the left seat, the right seat, or even from your favorite chair at home. Today, we're going to clear up one of the most misunderstood topics in Airbus flying. When exactly can you disconnect the autopilot during an approach? It sounds simple, but the answer depends not just on the published approach category. It depends on what your FMA is telling you in real time. Now, before we roll down the center line, let me just say, more than 63% of you watching haven't subscribed yet. So, if you want to keep your flying sharp, your knowledge current, and your career moving forward, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and share it with your fellow aviators. Let's keep the skies and your skill set safe. All right, picture this. You're flying an ILS or MLS approach. The FMA shows CAT 1. That's it, CAT 1. In this case, the minimum autopilot disconnection height is 160 feet above ground level. Why? Because at that moment, the system isn't giving you the layered redundancy and pinpoint precision you get in CAT 2 or CAT 3 modes. From there, the final segment is yours. Hands on, eyes outside. But here's the twist. And this is where new pilots can get caught out. You might be on a CAT 1 approach, but your FMA says CAT 3 dual. That capability display isn't just there for decoration. It's telling you the aircraft can legally and safely remain coupled all the way down to zero feet if you choose to auto land. Yes, you're still flying a Cat 1 in terms of minima, but your automation is giving you Cat 3 muscle. So the minimum AP disconnection height? Zero if you ride it all the way down. Now let's talk Category 2, Automatic Approach Without an Automatic Landing. Here, your minimum decision height is 100 feet. You must have at least one autopilot engaged in approach mode, and your FMA must read CAT 2, CAT 3 single, or CAT 3 dual. For these, your minimum autopilot disconnection height is 80 feet. That's it. 80 feet. It's a short, sharp transition, but it's plenty if you're ready for it. The takeaway? Don't just fly the number printed on the chart. Fly the capability you see on the FMA. If your FMA is giving you more capability than the approach category, you can use it, but always respect the higher limit, whether it's regulatory minima or the system's own boundaries. The FMA is your truth. Read it, understand it, and it will never lead you astray. Until next time, this is the A320 Mentor Channel, reminding you to fly smart, land safe, and keep learning.